Now up jumped the shark with his eight rows of teeth. He went down below and ate up our corned beef. Catch and fitch on a drifter was completely different to trawling. Before the First World War, East Anglia and Lowestoft was famous for its huge drifting fleet, some 350 boots in Lowestoft, which provided many jobs during the season from October to December. The drifter was a different design of boot to a trawler and used a long line of drift nets floating up near the surface of the sea to catch pelagic species, mainly herring and mackerel. Nets would be dropped into the water one or two fathoms. To keep the net in position, they had a large number of corks on the top of the net that would float. To make sure the nets hung down, they attached them to a heavy rope known as warp or messenger. The herring would unwittingly swim in the nets. The size of the mesh of the net allowed the young heron to escape to grow bigger. Trawlers and drifters used different nets with different sizes of mesh. I wonder why. The mizzen sail at the back of the drifter was important to keep the drifter and nets heading into the wind and tide. Once the skipper thought the nets were full, they were hauled on board. The heron shaken out on deck, passed down through the fish scuttles and into the fish room and lockers for storage. When the catch was good, they could return to port. Some drifters converted to trawling in order to keep the boot working all year and make it more cost effective. They were often referred to as drifter trawlers and the Lydia Eva was one such dual-purpose fishing boat which can be visited at Yarmouth. Whilst trawlers brought back fish to be eaten mainly in Britain, drifters brought back fish to be mainly sold in the Baltic countries. Squally old weather, boys how the sea roar! Squally old weather, boys how the sea roar!